1898, an Italian photographer took the very first photograph of the famous Holy Shroud of Turin, the burial cloth of Jesus Christ. His extraordinary discovery would later unlock incredible scientific findings about the passion of our Lord. Now stay with me to hear the story and the facts about this incredible miracle of the church. Howdy and welcome to America Needs Fatima. My name is Adrian Fonseca and I hope you all are enjoying these videos that I've been making. If you are, be sure to share them with your family and your friends, it'll help me out a lot. Uh, plus, spreading videos about Our Lady is always a good thing. The Holy Shroud of Turin, the burial cloth of Jesus in the tomb, has been venerated for centuries. But it wasn't until more recent times that it has even been possible for modern technology to prove the authenticity of the Holy Shroud. The scientific saga of the Holy Shroud began with the advent of photography. An Italian lawyer named Secundo Pia had been experimenting extensively with the recent discovery of the art of photography. On May 25, 1898, he took the very first photo of the Holy Shroud. In the darkroom, as he immersed the first two plates into the chemicals for development, astonishment and excitement arose in him, for instead of the usual negative, he saw a positive image of Christ's lifeless body. It is undoubtedly a mystery. It would be simply impossible for a medieval forger or any other artist to anticipate the photographic developing process centuries before it was invented. Overall, the positive print provided a wealth of information for medical investigators that is unobservable on the cloth itself. After the photographic sessions in 1898 and the subsequent dispute, the shroud lay undisturbed in its reliquary until two public exhibitions in the early 1930s. During this period, another series of photos were taken and intensive research was conducted by Dr. Pierre Barbet, the chief surgeon and the professor of anatomy at one of Paris's leading hospitals. Okay, I'm going to pause right here for just a moment to let you know that we have openings in our very special Child of Mary group. If you think more people need to hear about our Lord and our Lady, consider joining us. You would be joining a select group of like-minded people who want to spread devotion to our Lady as far and wide as we can. Also, every child of Mary has a special Mass prayed for them every single day. Just imagine the special graces that you would receive. If you're curious, click the link in the description down below, or go ahead and click the pop-up on your screen that's like right here. Thank you. Okay. Back to the Shroud. In the early 1970s, technological advances unlocked many hidden features of the Shroud. Incredibly, the body image lies only on the topmost fibrils of the threads and does not penetrate any deeper as paint or any other liquid substance would. And they found that image without any enhancing equipment could not be seen within six feet and required a viewer to stand beyond that distance. So any forger would need a very long paintbrush but this information is valuable not just because it refutes a forgery, but because further studies of the body image, when analyzed by the VPA analyzer equipment that uses light waves, produce a three-dimensional image. The intensity of dark and light represented the distance which part of the body lay from the shroud, covering at the moment of impression. When that information was entered into a special computer, a three-dimensional image resulted. News of the three-dimensional qualities of the Shroud's bodily imprint inspired several scientists, mostly pathologists, chemists, and physicists, to form a group known as STIRP, which stands for Shroud of Turin Research Project. They wanted to make a detailed study of the phenomenon. They made arrangements for a hands-on examination at the conclusion of a scheduled exposition in 1978. In October, 32 scientists, engineers, and photographers arrived in turn with 72 crates of equipment weighing 8 tons. Religious orientations ran the gamut from Catholic to Protestant and Jewish to non-believers, and most were highly skeptical. The pathologists and other physicians, however, noticed that the wounds were anatomically accurate and precise in their details. They confirmed that the nails went through the wrist and not the palms as conventional artists before the 20th century depicted. The chemist revealed that the bloodstains were composed of actual blood, 
and after careful study determined that the victim died a violent death after being scourged and beaten. Dr. John Heller, a physician and biochemist from Yale, summed up the team's findings. He said, and I quote, It was evident from the physical, mathematical, medical, and chemical evidence that there must have been a crucified man on the shroud. Next week, I'll be taking a short break from the Shroud of Turin series, but catch my final episode two weeks from now. I think it'll be the most intriguing one yet. And that's all for you today. Thank you for watching, and may God bless you, and Mary Immaculate keep you under her mantle. God love you. Thanks for watching. To save souls, there needs to be more Fatima Focus content on YouTube. If you agree and you want to help me make more videos, please join our special Child of Mary group. As a Child of Mary, you'll get a beautiful Fatima pin, plus inspiring reports on America Needs Fatima work to save souls. Click the link in the description below to learn more and become a Child of Mary. God love you.